A welcome, brothers and sisters, uh, to your wellspring of knowledge. Hello, friends. I am by the names of Joseph Ndaishimye. Welcome back to your channel, Medicine and Health Initiative Center. Today's topic is a postdural puncture headache, which is the complication associated with technical usage of spinal needle. Let us go on. Friends, what is PDPH, postdural puncture headache? It refers to occurrence of headache after dura matter is severely punctured to leak cerebral spinal fluid into epidural space. That's one. Second, it can be, it, it is also defined by International Headache of Society as a, a headache that develops within seven days of dura puncture and disappear within for, uh, f 14 days after dura puncture. This is the patholo pathophysiological mechanism of postdura puncture headache. First, uh, we have persistent leakage of cerebral spinal fluid which leads to decrease in cerebral uh, spinal fluid volume and pressure. This will also lead to shifts of intracranial contents and activate the adenosine receptors in the brain. And then the shifts of intracranial contents will end up leading to stretching of meninges that the activated adenosine receptors will lead to intracranial vaso uh, dilatation and then postdural puncture headache. Uh, these are the cardinal features of PDPH. First, we have headache, which is often front hospital. Second, we have uh, headaches which is which do not develop immediately after dura puncture, but twenty four hours after the procedure. Uh, but ninety percent, about ninety percent of the headaches presents within a three days. The headache became worse in the upright position. It eases when spine. The third sign is ghostly sign where we have transient relief of PDPH when the pressure is applied over the abdomen of the patient in the upright position. The fifth which is the group of other symptoms, you have neck stiffness, photophobia, tinnitus, visual disturbance, and cranial nerve paralysis, to mean that you can confuse PDPH with meningitis. Yeah. Now let us go on with management. Management of PDPH. We have a conservative and pharmacological management. First, once the patient is claiming postdural puncture headache, friends, first thing you have to know that PDPH usually dissolves spontaneously after some days. You have to keep in mind that it can go by itself. Don't consider medications uh, you have to know that PDPH is somehow reduced when you take recumbency or bed laced. Other thing is hydration. To mean that PDPH is somehow severe for dehydrated patients, please make adequate hydration to alleviate the severity severity of. PDPH, 
Now, what's the aim of conservative treatment of PDPH? Uh, the, aim, the aim of conservative treatment is to release or to relieve is to relieve the symptoms uh, while waiting for dura tear to heal by itself. Pharmacology, most time we use it, uh, we take into consideration when uh, headache persists after conservative management. First one, you have analgesia. Analgesia, uh, you have to give regular and steroid and inflammatory drugs like paracetamol, uh, ethanols, contraindicated, may be enough in the mild cases of postdural puncture headache. A second, we have caffeine. As you know, uh, because PDPH results from dilation of intracranial veins, caffeine as cerebral vasoconstrictor can be effective treatment, especially when the simple analgesia, analgesics fail it and the uh, epidural blood purchase contraindicated. At the dose of an anisteloid and inflammatory, uh, the dose of caffeine uh, to treat uh, this kind of headache, which you have seen that frontal hospital, it is between 300 to 500 milligram oral of, parasy, of uh, caffeine. But you can give it IV to patients once or two times daily. We have a synthetic, uh, the nocotrophin hormone, synactin. Uh, as you know, Adrenocorticotropic hormone reduce postural puncture headache where it uh, favors cerebrospinal fluid detention through increased mineral corticoid, mineral corticoid mediated sodium reabsorption, and it has direct energetic effect via its glucocortical steroid activity. Uh, the last, uh, which is the definitive uh, option for PDPH, is epidural blood pan EPD, EBP. Now, what's e epidural blood punch? Epidural blood punch involves the injection of orthologous blood into epidural space, thereby reducing or uh, residing, uh, reducing the chance of CSF leakage by creating blood clot, which may have puncturing effect on the dura tear, hence reduction in CSF leakage. Secondly, you have to know that 68 to 90% of PDPH is successful after first epidural blood punch, but up to se to ninety seven percent is successful for the second for the second uh, is successful for the second epidural blood punch. Friends, you have to remember that epidural blood punch is contraindicated for prophylactic purposes. Thank you for taking your time for the following presentation. Thank you.